is 7.32 p.m. We got nobody else in the waiting room. <clears throat> so I will, today is September 14th, 2021 at 7.32 p.m. Good evening, my name is Christian Klein. I'm the chair of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. I'm calling this meeting of the board to order. I'd like to confirm all members and anticipated officials that are present uh, from the Zoning Board of Appeals. Roger DuPont. Here. Patrick Hanlon. Here. Kevin Mills. Here. And Sean O'Rourke. Here. Right. Glad to have you all. Um, unfortunately, our two associate members are unable to join us this evening. Um, on behalf of the town, Rick Valarelli. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Good evening. Uh, Vincent Lee. Here. Good to have you. And uh, I believe Kelly Linema is going to join us later on, but she is um, hosting a housing forum for the Department of Planning and Community Development at the moment. Um, and then just confirming uh, people are here for our three cases this evening uh, for 2020A Lafayette Street. Is it Jason Santana? Or is there somebody else who's appearing? Uh, I am James Rissling, will be presenting. Good evening. Um, appearing for 53 Marathon Street, uh, Baba Nessie? Yes, I am here. Yep. Uh, good to see you. And appearing for uh, 14 Nycott Street, uh, Sean Hayes? Hi, good evening. Sean Hayes is here. Good evening. <clears throat> all right, so now we are all here to check the waiting room. Okay, this open meeting of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals is being conducted remotely consistent with an act extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency, signed into law on June 16th, 2021. This act includes an extension until April 1st, 2022 of the remote meeting provisions of Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, which suspended the requirement to hold all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed to continue to participate remotely. Public bodies may continue to meet remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. An opportunity for public participation will be provided during the public comment period during each public hearing. For this meeting, the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals has convened a video conference via the Zoom app with online and telephone access as listed on the agenda posted to the town's website, identifying how the public may join. This meeting is being recorded and it will be broadcast by ACMI. Please be aware that attendees are participating by a variety of means. Some attendees are participating by video conference. Other participants are participating by computer audio or by telephone. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you, your screen name or another identifier. Please take care to not share personal information. Anything you broadcast may be captured by the recording. We ask you to please maintain decorum during the meeting, including displaying an appropriate background. All supporting materials that have been provided members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda. And as chair, I reserve the right to take items out of order in the interest of promoting an orderly meeting. So where we are um, introducing new cases this evening. Um, the, the town um, encourages us to have a land acknowledgement. So whereas the Zoning Board of Appeals discusses and arbitrates the use of land in Arlington, formerly known as monotomy, an Algonquin word meaning swift waters, the board hereby acknowledges that the town of Arlington is located on the ancestral lands of the Massachusetts tribe, the tribe of indigenous peoples from whom the colony, province, and commonwealth have taken their names. We pay our respects to the ancestral bloodline of the Massachusetts tribe and their descendants who still inhabit historic Massachusetts territories today. That, check the waiting room. And then we will move uh, to the first item on our agenda this evening, which is the approval of minutes from June 1st. Um, those were submitted last week um, by Mr. Valarelli. Um, hopefully everyone has had an opportunity to review those. Um, I know I had sent in some comments. Are there any further comments or questions in regards to the June 1st minutes? Seeing none, may I have a motion to approve? So, so moved. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon, may I have a second? 
Second. Thank you, Mr. Mills. Uh, vote of the board, Mr. DuPont. Uh, aye. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Mr. Mills. Aye. Mr. O'Rourke. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Those minutes are approved. That brings us to the next item on our agenda, which is the approval of the minutes from our June 10th hearing. Um, similar to the previous, uh, those were submitted uh, to the board by Mr. Valarelli. Hope everyone's had an opportunity to review those and submit any comments or corrections they have. Are there any further questions or comments on those minutes from June 10th? Seeing none, may I have a motion to approve? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. May I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. DuPont. Vote of the board, uh, Roger DuPont. Aye. Uh, Patrick Hanlon. Aye. Kevin Mills. Aye. Uh, Sean O'Rourke. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Those are approved. Thank you all. Brings us to the next item on our agenda, which is the uh, vote to approve the meeting minutes from our June 29th meeting. Um, again, those were distributed by um, Mr. Valarelli to the board last week. Um, I hope everyone has had an opportunity to submit any questions or comments they had on those, Mr. Valarelli. Are there any further questions or comments on the minutes from June 29th? Seeing no. none, may I have a motion to approve? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. May I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Mills. Vote of the board, Mr. DuPont. Aye. Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Mr. Mills. Aye. Mr. O'Rourke. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Those minutes are approved. Great, thank you all for those. That brings us to the next item on our agenda. So we're now turning to public hearings on tonight's agenda. Here's some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of tonight's business. After I announce each agenda item, I will ask the applicant to introduce themselves and make their presentation to the board. I'll then request that members of the board ask whatever questions they have on the proposal. And after the board's questions have been answered, I will open the meeting for public comment. So with that, I uh, move to item number five on our agenda this evening, which is uh, docket number 3661-2020A Lafayette Street. Um, and uh, James Riesling, if you would like to go ahead. Nope, you're still muted though. There you Thank go. You. Thank you, good evening, sorry about that. Um, I have access to screen share. Uh, you yes, should be uh, keep on James. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Valerie. Let's see what I got here. All right, so, um, 2020 A Lafayette is, I guess, what one would call a, well, again, my name is James Rissling, LR Designs, Cambridge, Massachusetts. Um, 2020 A Lafayette, I guess one would call a stacked ranch. It's a two family um, separated uh, horizontally um, on quite a large yard. It um, has on the left-hand side, a two, two and a half story uh, home. And then on the right-hand side, a, a one story um, bung, uh, bungalow with a, with a recent addition. Um, this is looking at number 28, which is on the, on the right-hand side. And as we move down, this is another view of 28. I'm just giving some context of the neighborhood. I think the street is rather interesting. There's uh, quite a different variety of architectural expressions uh, up and down this portion of uh, Lafayette and um, you know, very, uh, some different passing. So um, this is uh, number 16, number 14, number 16 is uh, adjacent to the left. Another view of that home, uh, a little more context. And then, um, whoops, sorry, this is going fast. This is looking across the street at the two and a half story um, homes going up towards Mass Ave. And then, sorry about that. Then going back down uh, Lafayette um, towards Boulevard Road. 
And then this is a view of Boulevard Road and you can see uh, 2020A sort of peeking out in the back there between the two two and a half story houses. And then another shot of the end of Lafayette going towards Boulevard, which you see some of the context, um, you know, even the, a triple decker is thrown in here, a couple one story bungalows, like I said, and then uh, primarily two and a half story houses. So that was uh, to give us some context. Um, what we are proposing is a, a large addition to the rear of the house and subdividing the house uh, vertically into two townhouses. Um, these are the existing, come on, the existing elevations of the house of the, the sort of stacked ranch. It's a very simple, very taut um, exterior with somewhat of a colonial um, expression. House was built in circa 1962. Um, and then what we're proposing is uh, a house that's divided down the center to, to uh, sort of townhouse arrangements, including some development in the basement or cellar. Uh, the second floor and then a half story above. And um, the side view, you can see the outline of the existing house, which we're keeping. And the, the, the front and sides of this house are in the setbacks. And so our addition is concentrated on the rear and, and the top of the house. Um, this clear story that looks over the ridge is uh, approximately just a little under three feet above the ridge, the existing ridge, which is actually a, a fairly modest ridge um, for the existing house. And then at the highest point, we're about seven feet above the ridge. Um, the front elevation would retain the sort of taut, um, you know, colonial box um, with, a, with a covering at the entrance, some new windows, new roofing. And then this is that that um, monitor or clear story I was talking about that looks over the ridge and then the shed roof that rises above it. Um, in section, um, this, is, this is where we're at. Again, the, the main body of the house is here and then our addition comes up the back here. Um, I think if I go back to the zoning, I can show some of the so as I mentioned, the, this, the front of the house is in the setback and as well as the sides. And so that's what um, drove our decision to um, leave the, sort of work with the existing massing, but the existing house being so low, we thought that in this case, it was an opportunity to maybe go up above it with a more modern expression. And given um, some of the architecture that's been experimented with in the neighborhood, we thought that this was maybe a unique situation in which um, you know, we could do the two and a half story height, but then a more of a modern expression um, that, that will you know, sort of be in harmony with, with um, some of the neighbors at least, and then still maintain a nod to the historic context. Um, I think I'd like to leave it at that. I think more, more information comes out when people ask questions than, than I can think of. Um, Thank you. If, if I could have you just leave this up, that'd be great. Um, <clears throat> so I had a couple of questions. Um, the first is in the basement level, are there any egress windows? Yes, they are. They're on the side here on each side is an egress window. And then and you, also uh, an area way with stairs to the, to the rear yard. Okay. Do those impact into the, um, the driveways at all? Uh, no, the driveways are in approximately the same. Um, well, I, let me, the driveway cuts will be the same. Um, the driveway on the left is already uh, two tandem spaces and the driveway on the right is one which will become two tandem spaces but they're they're short of the they're short of these areaways at the rear of the house and both of those curb cuts are existing yes okay 
Yep, this is this is a our our graphic laid over the existing um, survey. Okay, and then from the front elevation to the home to the right of you to the um, that home is a single story, and the home to the left is two and a half. Do you know the height of the building to, of the two and a half story to the left? Um, I think it's, well, I don't know. I don't have it exact, but, you know, counting siding and getting to the ridge, it's approximately um, 32, 33 feet to the ridge. Okay. And the overall height of yours, I believe you said was 33 and a half. Is that correct? Um, mine, well, not mine, but... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, is 33 and a half, yes. 33 and a half, okay. Those were the questions I had. Are there other questions from the board? Mr. Chairman? Mr. Hanlon. Uh, <clears throat> the photographs show a tree, fairly large tree immediately in front of the house, um, if I'm not mistaken, yes. Yep. Um, and is that going to remain there or is that going to be removed? Um, I think what we're proposing, it is possible it could, it could remain. And do you have any, do you have any other, let me, let me explore that in a second, but in the back, it's hard, it's, it's hard to tell. You have a large, uh, <clears throat> a fairly large area out there that you're moving back into. And the question I have is, uh, what sort of, of uh, whether you have any substantial significant trees that are located in your backyard and if so what's going to happen to them? I believe the back is is fairly um, barren. I, I apologize I didn't include a photo. Let me see if the cover uh, I I'm just pulling up a satellite view real quick because I recall the back as being quite, quite bare, but there are trees on the property line that we would not be touching. There, there are, there is a, a large mass of trees between um, 2325 Boulevard and this house, but they are, I believe, on the property line. So those, I don't see any reason to touch those. So I, I, I will say that I went by this property this, this afternoon just to take a look and, and what I recall from looking uh, around it is consistent with what you just laid out. Okay, I just wanted to be clear on, on what the uh, silvicultural situation was here. Oh, great. Further, Mr. Hanlon? Nope. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Mr. Mills? <clears throat> yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, the half story, has that been reviewed with the building department and it's within specification? Mr. Valorelli? Uh, Mr. Mills, so I can, I can <clears throat> happily say <clears throat> that this is just the beginning for this applicant and any applicant who comes before you there are an additional 23 checkpoints, if you will, that the inspectional services looks at before we even get into the building code stuff. Um, so the half story is clearly part of it as part of the dimensional and density section of the zoning bylaw. Then we will automatically, because of the size of the proposed, get into all of the town laws, such as uh, construction control agreements, the tree bylaw, stormwater mitigation. Uh, again, 23 in number uh, checkpoints uh, before we even get into building code issues. The only thing that we have no control over is the size of the addition. All of the other regulations we have. Thank you. Hey, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. I, I wonder. I mean, it, are we, it, should I infer from that that we haven't really, that we don't know for sure yet whether it meets the half story or we, we frequently either have conditions or have to make judgments as to whether or not something does or doesn't comply with the zoning ordinance when we are making uh, <clears throat> special permit decisions. And 
uh, so I'm not sure that we can just say, well, never mind, that will all be taken care of at the building permit stage. I, I'd like to have some assurance, and we'll see this in another case more than this one, I think, uh, that that we're okay on the half story. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I can answer that if you like or not. Your call. Uh, yes, please. Okay, so uh, when I first look at a set of plans, I look at all of the things that are suspect. And um, three things came to mind with this. So I did some quick calculation. One was lot coverage. Uh, it barely made it, but it was less than 35%. The other one that um, kind of red flagged this deal was the availability of um, usable open space. So based on what they're proposing, they needed 1400 change. My calculations on the trapezoidal area was 1651. So that was okay. The uh, added calculations uh, seem to be okay at this point. Uh, they may they may or may not need to be reduced, but uh, Mr. Hanlon made a very good point. That was one of the three that was suspect to me when I first looked at this. Thank you, Mr. Bellaray. Thank you. Thank you. And I believe that was, um, <clears throat> there was a, the, um, the memorandum that came out from the Department of Planning and Community Development had a question about confirming the half story. Um, I believe there was a little bit of confusion about exactly how we are measuring it, um, where the town's practice is that it's based on the floor area of the floor below. Um, I, I did add since that memo, the, um, a, a story diagram that, that shows the outline of the floor below. And then um, the, the second floor area being uh, 1,470 gross square feet. And then the addition with the, with the shed roof on it um, is at 660 square feet. Yep. The rest of it is, is cathedral, um, attic, or balconies um, below the lower roof. Any further questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, I'll now open the meeting for public comment. Public questions and comments will be taken as they relate to the matter at hand and should be directed to the board for the purpose of informing our decision. Members of the public will be granted time to ask questions and make comments. Chair asks those wishing to address the board a second time during any particular hearing, please be patient, allow those wishing to speak for the first time to go ahead. Members of the public who wish to speak should digitally raise their hand using the button on the participant tab in the Zoom application. Those calling in by phone, please dial star nine to indicate you would like to speak. You'll be called upon by the meeting host and you'll be asked to give your name and address and you'll be given time for your questions and comments. All questions are to be addressed through the chair. And please remember to speak clearly. Once all public questions and comments have been addressed or the time allocated by the chair has ended, the public comment period will be closed. Board and staff will do our best to show documents being discussed. So with that, um, the first person wishing to speak uh, is Stephen Moore. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Steve Moore, Piedmont Street. Um, my first question is uh, simple that I was having a little difficulty interpreting some of the plans. The existing structure was called a stacked ranch does that mean it's a two family, first floor, one apartment, second floor, second apartment? That, that's correct. All right, uh, next question. That means that this is actually a total gut of the existing structure and a, a addition which deals with the, what's left over after the gutting, is that correct? That's right. Okay, so it's not, it's a lot more than an addition. It really is a total hollowing out of the existing structure. Okay, and uh, I believe that uh, the question was asked about the access to the basement, uh, and, and that's good. Um, I, I am a member of the tree committee, and I have a, a I want to make one point about the trees. Mr. Hanlon, thank you uh, very much for your, uh, your questions about the trees. I, I appreciate that. And Clearly, Mr. Valerelli said the tree bylaw will be uh, will be part of the approval process. 
it looks to me from the satellite photograph that stand of trees in back is uh, is fairly large, as as was stated by the applicant. As those are in the setbacks uh, of the back, they will be protected trees, um, so they will have to they will have to come up with a tree plan. I'm just saying that for the information uh, for the applicant's information that a tree plan will have to be approved by the tree warden for the taking of the trees or or not taking of the trees, just what the plan is for the trees on the property. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Very welcome. Are there any further questions from the public? I have a question I can't seem to raise my hand. Mr. Williams, please. Uh, my name is Ryan Williams. I reside next door to this property at 28 Lafayette Street. Uh, my question, I have two questions that are related to each other. Uh, one is, does the Zoning Commission deal with fencing? Uh, we do not. Uh, Mr. Valarelli, can you address that? I can. I can. Uh, what, what are your concerns, sir? There are fence regulations in place that they are in the zoning bylaw. Um, they're not the easiest thing to understand, but if you have a specific concern, I can answer that question for you. Um, I guess, well, I guess the, the big one is if you look at the diagram that uh, Mr. Rissling has on the screen um, on the right next to the green, yes. they have the wood fence it is actually on the right side of the property line. Yes, that has been noted, and it that matches up with what's um, out on the ground. And I guess I just wonder: is that something that that the zoning board deals with, and the adjacent trees that affect that? Um, we've already had a tree fall down from this property, so a very large tree fall down from this property. So, and that affected the fence and I just wonder who, who deals with that. Okay, so it is a building department issue, but um, again, a fence that's six feet in height or less does not require a building permit and it could be placed right on the property line. The only exception to that is the first five feet of the fence from the property line in, I'm talking the front of the property, cannot be more than 30 inches high. So if the applicant or anybody else for that matter in town wishes to install a fence to separate the side yards from the neighbor, they can do so up to six feet in height all the way down to the backyard uh, where the property ends, with the exception mm -hmm. that the first five feet cannot be any higher than 30 inches. And that's for safety purposes if a child is riding a bike and so on and so forth, uh, backing out of the driveway. And to address your, your question about the trees, um, if I could actually ask of, of Mr. Moore again, um, when the tree committee or the tree warden is doing the pre-construction survey, did they look at the health of the tree, do you know? So Hold on just a moment, sir. Please. Sorry to catch you uh, off guard. Well, the reason I'm off guard is I was trying to look at the materials for the next. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, your, your question again, what about health of the tree? I heard so, so as a part of the, the enforcement of the tree bylaw, um, I believe the town, the tree warden does a survey of the trees on the property. Do they do any evaluation? Does he do any evaluation of the health of the trees that you know? Yes, he, he, he does. He, he notes the species, he notes the, uh, the height, and, and most importantly, the location because of the way the bylaw is constructed with the setbacks. But uh, yes, he does those. Uh, he, he, he doesn't have an opinion. He just, he's more interested in the tree plan. Mm -hmm. It's going to be done, uh, particularly within the setbacks, because that's the structures of the bylaw. But yes, he, he often works with, with the uh, applicants to talk about what their plans are and, and sometimes makes recommendations on the best way forward. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. Certainly. Uh, Mr. Williams, anything further? I guess, I guess one last thing, if, if you don't mind. Okay. Um, 
is removal of those trees, Mr. Moore, something that has to go through the town of Arlington? Mr. Moore, can you address that? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, uh, the the trees that are in the setbacks, I can't remember if it's 10 feet on the on the back and the sides, uh, but it's, I think, 20 feet in the front. I, I don't, off the top of my head, I'm not sure the number of feet in the setbacks, but if the trees are in that setback and there is either a substantial addition being made, which is the case in this case, or there's a, a demolition, um, then the applicant has to come up with a tree plan, uh, which is what's going to happen in the existing trees if they're planning to take, and this is on the entire piece of our property, and if there are trees planning to be taken within setbacks, then there is a, uh, a fee that gets charged depending on the size of the tree um, where the applicant has to make a uh, can, what can be a significant contribution to the town trees please fund. I believe it's $375 an inch uh, diameter breast height of a tree that's taken. Um, clearly the bylaws hope is to maintain the tree and tree can't be in town. And so uh, the tree warden spends a great deal of time working with the applicants to preserve what can be preserved and still able to build the buildings and additions that they they want and, and require. Does that answer your question? I'm not, I was kind of long-winded. So Mr. Moore, uh, Mr. Williams? Yes, it does, thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Mr. Moore. Are there any further questions? Any further questions from the public? Do not see anyone waving or anyone with their hand up. So the public comment period for this hearing will be closed. Uh, the board would now discuss their findings and the potential decision. And uh, any vote taken at this hearing will be preliminary until the written decision is approved by the board at a subsequent meeting and all votes will be conducted by a roll call vote. Um, Mr. Chairman. Alan. Um, it may be that I've just missed my chance to do this, but I wanted to wait until the public comment period was over to raise it. So I went to the site today and I and is and I I'm thinking that number 28 is the is the house with the more or less modern addition that is to the right. I wonder if Mr. Williams or the applicant could could confirm that. that that's correct. Um, so I, I actually, to, you know, with, with cell phones, you can do this, took a picture there and along the fence, which is now partly broken, actually not partly broken, the fence just has a gap in it. Um, I don't really see any trees at all and don't remember having seen any trees along that fence um, uh, when I visited the site. And I'm wondering if I missed something, are, are there any trees along that border? This is the border. Um, there are, if you look at that tree, there is a, that tree right there. That's a, you know, a significant remnant. Um, I think it's a Norway maple. Yeah. Um, more or less a garbage tree that has allowed itself to, to grow there. And then to the left is the one I'm a little bit more concerned about. Um, that's a, the larger tree above it, that is the one at the back of the property line, probably a, easily a 60, 65 foot tree. Um, silver maple grows fast, falls yeah. quick. <clears throat> and, and, but that um, is on, is, is that in, uh, is that on this property? I, I'm looking at what I think is the tree you're talking about and it's behind a fence that's immediately behind the house. Is, is is that tree, I think that, that uh, Mr. Rissling identified that tree as being on the other side of the fence. Are there any substantial trees on that are on the, this property? I don't know if that one is. I'm, it may not be. I don't venture onto their property, so. Okay, just, I'm just trying to figure out, obviously, I guess the other question I have is in terms of your concern with the fence, obviously some something happened to have broken it. Uh, and Sky split off. I'm assuming that there'll be a new fence there, but I wondered if, 
you is your concern that there may be other trees falling or is there a different an additional concern with respect to the fencing mr williams i guess this is for you they were separate issues i think the fence is a concern because i basically maintain it because no one else maintains it and it just falls down in the wind um, um that's just an annoyance um and the tree, you know, this this Norway maple tree that you see that, you know, leans over the mint greenhouse in the back. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a, it's not a very, it, it just, I don't know. It doesn't seem very safe to me. I mean, the tree grows at a, like a 30 degree angle to the ground and. I don't want to belabor the point. No, and I then think in the, in the I, foreground next to the house is a large, I believe it's called a sumac. Sumac, yes. Um, I, I, I don't think, consider that a tree. I mean, I think we, we recognize that Mr. Williams, you know, has invested a lot of energy and design and material in his yard and his house. And I think my clients would be willing to work with him um, with regards to the fence, because, you know, the, the, the fence isn't really attractive to anyone. So I think, I think they would definitely come to some agreement pretty quickly. The, the base of that tree does appear to be in the rear yard of 2325 Boulevard Road. Hey, Mr. Chairman, that... That, that was what I had for Mr. Williams. I wondered if I could just prevail upon the body. I'm a little bit unclear as to what the, I'm a little bit unclear as to what in the planning department's memorandum was the, is the issue that's, that's at stake here. We don't have drawings in that memorandum. And so it's hard to follow exactly what it is that uh, the planning department is, is raising as a question on how the, the second, the half story is is done, and I wonder if if one of you who are more knowledgeable than I am could explain what it is that is being raised and and why it does not appear to be a uh, a concern that should that we need to address. So the this comes down to the definition of half story in the zoning bylaw. Um, the zoning bylaw is very clear that. Um, you know, the, in the third level of a home, uh, not more than 50% of the floor area can have a distance from the underside of the roof structure to the finished floor uh, greater than seven feet. Um, and that the, the roof above that needs to be sloped at a minimum pitch of two to 12. What the zoning bylaw is less clear about is what exactly it is being referenced against. Um, and the, the planning department had read it as saying that 50% of the roof at the third floor level, that 50% of the area under that roof um, cannot exceed seven feet in height. Whereas the opinion of the zoning enforcement officer and the, and the building department is that it is actually 50% of the area of the floor immediately below. Um, which is the criteria that the applicant has included in their application. And so the, uh, the, the confusion um, is, a, is a difference in opinion of how this is enforced, but it is up to the zoning enforcement officer to set that policy. Um, and this has been the longstanding policy of the zoning enforcement officer that um, the half story is in relation to the the area of the floor immediately below. Mr. Valerelli, is that correct? That, that is well said, Mr. Chairman. If there's any ambiguity in the uh, definitions, and there is um, in the definition of half story in the older bylaw and the newer bylaw, then it is up to the chief zoning enforcement official, <clears throat> building commissioner, if you will, at the time to make the call. Thank you. Uh, and then the other two recommendations from the planning department, one was um, an updated elevation or rendering to better convey the massing of the structure, um, which if 
depending on how we vote this evening, um, that's something we could request. Um, and then the last is that the Z that the board requests a tree plan approved by the tree warden prior to allowing work to commence on the property. And as Mr. Valerelli had noted, that will happen um, as the as the permit moves forward. Mr. Mills? Yes, it's standard operating procedure for the tree warden to visit the site and sign off on everything. No. <clears throat> I believe that the the three indicate the three recommendations from the planning department um, will be addressed. Any further questions or comments on this application? So if um, the board has three typical conditions that we include with every decision. Um, let's go ahead and read those now. Uh, number one is the final plans and specifications approved by the board for the permit shall be the final plans and specifications submitted to the building inspector of the town of Arlington in connection with this application for zoning relief. There shall be no deviation during construction from approved plans and specifications without the express written approval of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, number two is the building inspector is hereby notified that he has to monitor the site and should proceed with appropriate enforcement procedures at any time it determines that violations are present and the inspector of buildings shall proceed under section 3.1 of the zoning bylaw under the provisions of chapter 40 section 21d and institute non-criminal complaints. If necessary, the inspector of buildings may also approve and institute appropriate criminal action also in accordance with section 3.1. And number three is the board shall maintain continuing jurisdiction with respect to this special permit grant. Are there any other conditions or concerns from the board? Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Hanlon. Um, I sort of, I understand the difficulties uh, of restating things that are already in the bylaw and already in what the standard operating procedure of uh, ISD is. Um, but I, I seem to recall that under several, that in previous cases when Mr. Moore has, has come and at this point his attendance uh, at our meetings compares favorably with, with practically anybody else except of course the chair. Um, I think that it, we have done in the past, uh, and I guess I would feel comfortable including the condition just as a kind of a reminder and part of the checklist, even though I'm confident that Mr. Valerelli and his P and, and ISD generally would, would, would do this anyway. Uh, conceivably, we could simply say the ZBA notes that a tree plan approved by the tree warden uh, prior to allowing work will be required uh, prior to allowing work to commence on the property, if the board thinks that that's preferable in order to maintain comedy with ISD. Um, but in any event, I would like to see that that condition included in the conditions that that we have just to uh, uh, to continue our previous practice and, and just to call out the issue and make it clear to everyone that 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 uh, this board is seriously interested in the enforcement of that provision. So the ZBA notes that a tree plan approved by the tree warden will be required prior to. Uh, prior to allowing work to commence on the property. Yep, I'm, I'm just editing the language from the staff. Mr. Chairman? Mr. Moore? Yeah, I, I know public comment period is closed. Can mm -hmm. I say one thing? It's your, your call. As, as a member of the tree committee, you may. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, Mr. Hanlon, thank you. I appreciate those comments. Um, I think the word you might want to use is prior to demolition. There's been a problem with building permits being issued after the demolition has already taken trees out. So I think you might want to say prior to demolition. Thank you. Well, I'm not sure there actually is technically a demolition here. So 
I mean, th this is going to be a gut renovation, but I don't think that the word demolition is de describes exactly okay. what's supposed to happen. Is is there a better word to catch the your concern? We would be required prior to demolition or allowing work to commence on the property. That works. That works for me, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Okay, so to read that back, so that would read the ZBA notes that a tree plan approved by the tree warden will be required prior to demolition or allowing work to commence on the property. Does that work for you, Mr. Hanlon? Yes, it does. Perfect. Are there any further proposed conditions for the board? Seeing none, do we have a motion? Mr. Chairman, um, I move that the the uh, board approve the application subject to the three standard conditions that uh, the chair read earlier, uh, plus the additional condition uh, that has been added into the record relating to the uh, tree plan. Thank you, Mr. Hanley. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Mills. Vote of the board, Mr. DuPont? Aye. Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Mills? Aye. Mr. O'Rourke? Aye. And the chair votes aye. Uh, uh, this is approved with the four conditions as stated. Well, thank you thank very you. much. Thank you, everyone. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and if you could go ahead and stop sharing <laughs> before logging out. Okay, perfect, thank you. Um, so going back to our agenda, the next item is item number six, which is docket 3663, 53 Marathon Street. Um, the applicant is represented by Mr. Robert Anessi. Yes, I am here. Are we ready? We are ready to go. I'm accompanied by uh, Mr. Paul uh, Grillo, he's the architect, uh, and Albert Azatantz. Uh, Albert uh, is the principal with respect to the ownership of the property. Uh, just a correction at the outset, I agree with planning. There was no need for a large addition advertisement with respect to the property. Uh, this is a teardown. Uh, uh, the lot basically has a two family on it uh, as we sit here now. Uh, that two family was constructed in 1915. Uh, it's not on the significant list. Uh, I did check that out carefully. Uh, we propose to take the building down. And by the way, the building, currently the existing building is non-conforming. Uh, as planning has indicated, it's non-conforming certainly with respect to the front yard. What I did, and I hope you got my memo that I sent to the board uh, where I went through uh, each of the dimensional requirements contained in the zoning bylaw to show that uh, the building that we were proposing to put up would in fact comply with all of the dimensional requirements of the zoning bylaw and Paul Grillo will show you, uh, if you will allow us to screen share, uh, Mr. Klein, uh, will show you once I finish my opening statement, uh, will show you uh, the plans we're proposing. Paul, could you conjure up the site plan uh, for us at this point? Mr. Valorelli, can you give him permission to do so? He's yes. going to call Mr. Chairman. When we get the site plan up on the screen, uh, we're going to be able to show what we are proposing on the site. You doing okay with that, Paul? Yep, I think, um, okay. there we go. All right, there we go. All right, so uh, right now uh, it's a corner lot and uh, we basically uh, have one side on Waldo Road and one side on Marathon Street. Uh, the existing driveway is on Waldo Road. 
as you look at the site plan, we are proposing to take down that driveway on Wald Waldo Road and construct a new driveway. Uh, we are also proposing to construct a driveway off of Marathon Street. So the relief that we need is a relief for two driveways, and that's a special, special permit request under the zoning bylaw. Uh, now, with respect to the neighborhood, uh, if you took a look at the plan, uh, the memo that was sent to you by the zoning board, I don't know whether you can conjure uh, that up, uh, Chris Klein, uh, the, the uh, uh, memo from the planning board kind of shows the neighborhood on Marathon Street and Waldo Road. And uh, if, you, if you had a chance to look at that, you would see that the houses on Marathon Street and even on Waldo Road are all pretty similar. Now, uh, I agree with planning that uh, none uh, in the neighborhood have two driveways, but I think the advantage of what we are proposing is that we are going to have one driveway on one street on Waldo Road and another driveway on Marathon Street on a different road. So we're going to have the driveway separated uh, with respect to different streets. I think that addresses the concern uh, in the a planning department memo where the planning department talked about the fact that uh, we wanna be sure there are no safety issues, uh, whether pedestrian or traffic. I'm gonna to suggest to you that Marathon Street is not going to look any different uh, with respect to this driveway for this property that we're uh, proposing to construct uh, than it does now. Because if you look at the property directly next door on Marathon Street, you'll see that that has very similar parking uh, with respect to that property. And even the other properties, again, if you uh, looked at the, the planning department Google uh, 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 image, that shows the other properties on Marathon Street, uh, very similar to what we are proposing. Uh, essentially, uh, th the proposal is akin to having two separate units, although it's one, two family, but it's two separate units because each of the units are going to have access to their own unit. As planning indicated, uh, indicated in their memo, the, the front portion of the building will be the entranceway to the building. And Paul could get into uh, with you uh, as uh, uh, concerning the plans with respect to what will be done on the sides of the building. Uh, the, uh, there will be safety with respect to a separation of the driveways from any, uh, from any access to the building itself. I don't believe that's going to be an issue. Uh, all in all, we are going to be improving the site. We're gonna be improving the site because we're not going to have any non-conformities on the site. And I know that planning uh, indicated that there was no uh, present uh, numbers with respect to open space, landscape or usable. And quite frankly, I don't know what they were, but I can tell you now that what we are proposing is going to fully comply uh, with the zoning bylaw. And the other uh, uh, point to, uh, that I, I wish to make here is that we are talking about a lot that has 6,988 square feet, almost 7,000 square feet. So it's a pretty good size lot. Paul, why don't you jump in uh, with respect to the plans themselves, even though uh, our position is uh, that we need to have our plans approved by the building department. There, that is the department that's going to determine uh, whether in fact we comply with zoning. Uh, and uh, again, I think that format will follow what I have indicated in my statement of facts in the memo I've submitted to the zoning board. Can you jump in at this point, Paul? Sure, and, and I can give just a little bit more um maybe context on the neighborhood, um, if, if that's okay. Please. Um, just, this is the corner lot that's in question. Um, 
it's a it's a two and a half story structure, two family uh, unit over unit uh, with a large hip roof. Um, and the the proposed structure is also two and a half stories. Again, this is non-conforming. It's a very large corner lot, um, almost seven thousand square feet for this neighborhood. That's a large lot. Um, we see a lot of them under six thousand square feet. Um, regarding the driveways, though, I think there is more precedence on Marathon. Um, if, if we just come up the straight here, there are, there are a number of newer townhomes that have multiple driveways on them. And similar to what we're doing on the corner of Marathon and Broadway, there it's a much smaller lot, but there are two entrances to, to this structure, one off of Marathon, one off of Broadway. So there definitely is precedence in the neighborhood. Um, we're taking a structure that was built in 1915 that just really isn't, um, you know, it's in very poor condition. And, um, you know, we often are looking at to rehab these structures, but this, in this case, it really wasn't um, feasible. Um, so we're really bringing, you know, introducing a structure to the, to the neighborhood that's going to be, you know, um, you know, in keeping with kind of the development of the area and some of the the neighboring um, newer structures and additions that have been occurring um, compared to this old, this older 1915 structure. Um, and there are still some of those in the neighborhood, um, but, but it's adapting quite a bit. Um, I can go back to the plans real quick. Um, so what we've done is we have this unit over unit building there today. Um, the parking for the, for the building is in the back corner here. I don't know if you can see my mouse on there, um, but this is the corner where um, the parking is today. And it's a unit over unit. Um, and the structure that we're proposing to put in is gonna be of a townhouse style um, where the two units are, are separated by a demising wall. Um, we have the large lot, we can accommodate uh, very nice open spaces and, and separate them so that they, there's more privacy. Many of these homes, there's one open space in the rear for both homeowners to, to share. We actually have enough property there that we can provide nice living outdoor space um, in addition by, by separating the driveways and orienting one unit more toward Marathon and one toward Waldo. Um, you know, the, the owner has proposed some, some rather extensive landscaping um, for the corner lot um, to, to, you know, kind of buffer the, the privacy from the lawn, but also um, to, to just make a nice attractive corner lot um, condition. Um, the elevation that would face Marathon would actually have a bit of a, um, a little more classic colonial feel to it. While we, we with a few probably contemporary little um, um, detailing or um, um, articulation um, in the end, and then the, the entrance along Marathon Street, you know, we're looking at board and batten styles with um, with clobbered siding and entries. Um, because of the way the site does taper back, we've accommodated uh, one of the parking spots in the garage. So that would actually be in the building. So um, one parking spot is actually in an enclosed garage while the other would be outdoor surface parking. Um, some renderings of the structure as proposed today. Um, it is two and a half stories. It would be under 35 feet, completely conforming structure. Um, we have calculated the half story is under 50% of the, the floor below uh, at seven feet. Um, and that's really, that's really the, the, the overall layout and design intent for the structure. Thank you. Anything? Thank you, Paul. Uh, the uh, essentially that would be the presentation. Uh, uh, again, uh, the only relief. Sorry. We, I'm sorry. Uh, the only relief we were really requesting uh, is with respect to the two driveways. We're not seeking relief for a large addition. Thank you. Um, couple of quick questions. Are there any trees that are impacted by the construction of the driveway on Marathon Street? Oh. There are actually no trees on the property at all. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so the 
plan doesn't show the adjacent property on Marathon, but they have a driveway that's approximately 20 feet wide currently. Um, do you know how far away from that driveway the driveway on your property would be? Is that this driveway here? Yeah. Um, that's a good question. Um, it, it looks, I believe that one looks very cl relatively close to the property line. So we would be relatively close. Maybe, I don't know, that might be about two feet. If, okay. if it's on the property line, it's hard to tell exactly, but we're relatively close to the property line as well. Um, and your, your sketch of makes it look like there's a curb that wraps the property, but um, neither of these streets have established curbs except in certain locations. Um, and so it's where one driveway ends is sometimes a little bit difficult to discern. So I'm just like, I, I think that the driveway is a good distance back from the intersection, which is helpful. Um, and I don't see it as interfering with visibility at the corner. Um, I was a little concerned about the the overall length of driveway that would be created along that side. So I, I think it would be helpful if there was a way to um, sort of delineate the the separation between the two driveways, mm -hmm. uh, which would also help to protect the the fence that would otherwise be bisecting a, a much wider curb cut. Okay. And then on Waldo Street, um, you would be infilling, uh, obviously, the drive, the existing driveway and continuing the, um, so you would just be removing, so the existing sidewalk, okay. Yeah. Would essentially remain, and then you'd be removing the asphalt down to the street and restoring the grass verge on the edge of the street. Correct. Um, we would be restoring this to the open space use, and our new curb would be you know, probably in this this vicinity. Mm -hmm. Would it impact that street tree? Um, that's a good, that is a good question. Um, I don't know if I, sorry, I'm just going to, um, it looks like this is the existing tree right here. So it looks like we are just inside of it. For the survey. Oh, I see. Okay. So it looks like we are just inside of it. So that tree could be preserved. It appears so, yeah. Okay. We will have to reserve, uh, pr preserve that tree. Absolutely, Paul. Yeah. Are there other questions or comments from the board? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. Um, is there any in the um, driveway? The proposed driveway towards Marathon Street. Um, I'm, as I recall, there's language in the zoning bylaw relating to vegetative buffers, and I'm wondering what is proposed for that area between the uh, between the uh, uh, driveway and the uh, and the uh, property line. It looks uh, it looks as if there's none. So yeah, currently it's probably a, more of a, um, a lawn buffer is what we're carrying today. Um, I do not know the ownership of that fence. I believe it's the neighbors or um, a proposed, if there's a proposed fence for this property. Um, but that is right now really be kind of a turf buffer at a, at a minimum. Um, I don't believe we have, it doesn't appear we've had plantings proposed for that edge specifically. The, the, Thank you. The reference from Mr. Hanlon is to uh, 6.1.10.a in the zoning bylaw, which includes it's the, um, the last line in the first paragraph is side yards used for parking shall have a vegetated buffer when abutting a lot used for residential purposes to minimize visual impacts. Um, Mr. Valarelli, is there a particular standard that the 
the zoning enforcement official has adopted for what that vegetated buffer would be? Uh, sorry, I was on mute. I believe it's uh, laid out in the town laws, not the zoning bylaws. I would have to look into that. But okay. yes, there are specifications um, with respect to the buffers. Okay. And uh, Ms. Valerie, the driveway can be, I believe, as narrow as seven foot six per bylaw. Is that correct? It could be. Uh, that, that's the minimum width that's allowed on the side yard. Um, the preferable width is eight and a half, um, which is still doable here, and that would allow for a buffer as well. Okay. I believe the, this plan shows it's just slightly over 12 feet, so there should be plenty of room from the building to the property line. That is correct. Okay. Chairman? Mr. Chairman? Yes, please. Mr. Dupont? Yes. Hi. I just had a couple of questions about the uh, both driveways. So. Uh, the way that it is depicted, I wanted to know if there was a plan for cars to be able to park behind the cars that are shown on the plans. So are those parking spaces? Because I was looking at that same section that you were just referring to, Mr. Chairman, as far as uh, being able to park in a driveway. Um, you can park in the in this minimum front yard setback and I was just wondering what the what the intent was on the part of the applicant with regard to parking would they think of those as two parking spaces per unit no we can we consider it one parking space per unit which is which is the requirement that has to be beyond the setback so that's what we're designating as each of those parking spots to meet the requirement of the town um, we are over 20 feet back from the property line itself and and similar you know probably a similar or slightly greater distance from the sidewalk itself um, which is more than ample for a second vehicle to be in there and not be in the driveway right um most cars are around 16 to 18 feet long um and then so i just had a comment about the choice of any sort of buffer materials i'm particularly sensitive these days to driving down streets and having sort of overgrown buffers where you're coming up and you can't really see the driveway and then all of a sudden somebody backs out. And I've noticed that in particular where people are using large grasses, which seem to really sort of grow, uh, you know, very vigorously. And so I would just suggest that, you know, whatever you can do to preserve the sight line as you're coming up on Marathon approaching um, the, um, Waldo Street that you want to make sure that people coming up aren't having their view of the driveway completely blocked by some sort of growth. So just a thought. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. Just wanted to just point out that that's not only just a good idea, but one of the factors that we're going to have to consider in deciding whether to grant this is whether or not uh, the new curb cut and the, basically the design of the driveways is going to is going to adversely affect safety of pedestrians or in other traffic and so if if the buffer is done in such a way as I mean, you need to have some the buffer that the zoning law by law requires and if it's done in a certain way it may adversely affect safety so you have to sort of design with both considerations in mind absolutely Other questions from the board? None at this time. I will now open the meeting for public comment. Um, as stated before, the public questions and comments were taken as they relate to the matter at hand and should be directed to the board for the purpose of informing our decision. Members of the public who wish to speak should digitally raise their hand using the button on the participant tab in the Zoom application. Those calling in by phone, please dial star nine to indicate you would like to speak. You'll be called upon by the chair. You'll be asked to give your name and address and you'll be given time for your questions and comments. Um, so at this time, uh, Mr. Moore. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just very quickly, uh, uh, the landscaping uh, presentation is very helpful. Um, 
I appreciate the applicant going to the uh, extent of doing that early rather than later so we can see what's going on with the existing trees, existing plantings, and what's, uh, what's proposed for the future. Um, so thank you very much for that. I, um, it makes my sort of job quite a bit easier. Um, uh, and one comment further about the tree, uh, the street tree, which is a protected tree. Um, and, uh, I just want to give the applicant a heads up that they're going to have to be uh, critical root zone protection measures put in place for that tree. It's quite close to the current driveway. And my guess is with all the construction and construction materials and equipment around, uh, you have to uh, protect the critical root zone and the uh, tree warden will be able to advise you on, on methods for that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. Uh, next on the list is Mr. Uh, Mr. Brownstein. Hi, yes, my name is Michael Brownstein. I live at 62 Marathon Street. And I have two questions. Please. Given that this is a teardown, I'm just wondering whether there will be any excavation in the basement area. Um, Mr. Corello, can you address that? Uh, yeah, the, the, you can actually see here there, um, there will be a basement of on the new structure and it and it does not align with the existing one perfectly you can you can almost kind of see we have the outline of the existing building today within our footprint um there will be some additional excavation and, and the reason the second question is related to it is in in east arlington there are some reports of rats around and i was just wondering if there was excavation uh, what are the rodent control measures that might be in place um, that's, so Mr. Perillo, if you can address that, if not, I would ask Mr. Valorelli what the requirements are. Yeah, uh, I, I, right now I can, I can say that they would certainly be, you know, um, the contractor and, and the client would be required to follow certainly the, any state or, or local requirements at a minimum. Um, and if there are any issues, I'm, I'm sure they'd be, um, any known issues in this area, I'm sure they can um, address those with the building department. Perhaps um, I don't I don't know any road mitigation plans that are you know as the architect I don't know the exact application of any road or requirements of road mitigation so I can't really comment on that myself. Mr. Valorelli, do you have any? I can, Mr. Chairman. So the demolition sign-off package is quite extensive. Uh, contains all the new laws that were put into play in the latest um, town meetings. Uh, that is a board of health sign-off, which not only includes the best abatement but uh, rodent control measures. Uh, and not to switch gears, but the buffer uh, section of the bylaw you're referring to is 8.07, addresses driveway slope and it addresses side yard parking buffers. So yes to rodent control, it's part of the demolition sign off sheet. And um, it, it, it's uh, governed by the Board of Health, but nevertheless, it has to be addressed prior to the demolition of the structure. Is is there any specificity you could give to what those measures are? I think we can do that off, off, offline, but um, yeah. come down the building pop and I can step you through it. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Anything further, Mr. Brownstein? No, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Ms. Vanderberg? Are you able to see me and hear me? I can. Can you can you see me as well, or do I, you just have my half of you? See, I can't see your face, but I can. You're there. I can see the back of your hand now. Better. Hi. My oh, name's. Now, uh, I just Dr. Your, now all I see is the. Oh, sorry. You're in two windows. I beg your pardon. Now I see you fully. Yes, please. Okay. Hi, I'm Dr. Laura Vanderberg. I live at 20 Waldo Road with my husband, Dr. Andrew Fiordalis, and we have a few questions. We were hoping that um, one, the proposed square footage could be um, described in comparison to the current square footage. We see the overlay, but we're wondering what the percentage of increase is. And um, then two, mm -hmm. we'd like to ensure that the tree that is in that, um, 
dead strip, as they call it, is retained. We've lost many trees in this neighborhood that are in the dead strip for a variety of reasons, and it's difficult to, to keep green out front. Mm -hmm. Also, we do have concerns about the visibility and the increase of a driveway. So that intersection with Waldo and Marathon is um, relatively challenging from a neighborhood perspective. It's a cut street cut through street from um, Marathon is a cut through street from Mass Ave to Broadway. And there have been multiple accidents that I myself have witnessed at that intersection. <clears throat> so as, as you know, that street um, across Marathon, there is a house on that street that also has a green buffer around the edge and that particular lot overgrows quickly to address the concerns of the board. Um, it reduces visibility and there have been accidents on that corner. So I do have concerns about adding a driveway on a cut through street um, when visibility could be reduced um, with a corner um, landscaping application. So those would be the three right now. Okay. Um... So I will just quickly note that the, oops, sorry, I have somebody in the waiting room. Um, just note that the, the, the proposal to demolish the existing home and build a new home can be done by right without action of the board. Um, but I would ask uh, Mr. Gorello if he can note the size of the prior building and the size of the new building. I'm actually at the, Look at the existing one again. I don't remember. Um, I don't have the existing square footage in front of me. Um, I think it's the next page. Uh, it, yeah. Um, so C2798 here. Okay. Um, and we are. So with the basements and the half story, we'd be 6,807 of total. Okay. Of total living area, gross square footage. So actually that table shows existing and proposed, correct? Yeah, I, um, oh. we don't have, I, we didn't oh, um, yeah, extensively as built the existing structure because it was coming down. Okay. So that's more than a hundred percent increase. Is that right? Correct. Uh, Twenty-seven ninety-eight. Correct. I don't. I don't believe there's any living area noted. I don't know if I um, don't know if that's the gross square footage of the existing structure. That may be the living area. So that would not include the basement, likely of that building today, where our number would include the basement. Um, so if we were to have at the basement of the existing structure that would be a higher number um similar with the attic that one actually does not have a habitable attic um where our structure would and those okay. are those thank are two you. areas that are inflating the number extensively okay thank you and then um the tree in the strip is as mr moore noted um as in mr hanlon the, the that street tree is a protected tree under the town bylaws and cannot be removed um without action from the tree committee. Uh, the tree committee has been very, very reluctant to do that with any street trees, to my knowledge. Um, Mr. Moore, I don't know if you would like to comment further on that. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, you're, you're, you're correct. Uh, removal of street trees is, is, uh, is one of the things we are watching very carefully. Uh, and and folks are increasingly following the various rules related to that. There's a, a number of mass state laws re related to the street tree protection. So, uh, so yes, it's a it's a, it's an important issue. Thank you. And the applicant is going to treat it that way. I'm assuming. Yes. Absolutely. Yes, Mr. Chairman. I I, I have to uh, again applaud the applicant for having thought through the landscaping so early in the process. And 
And speaking of landscaping, if I could ask Mr. Grell, if you could put the landscaping plan back up. Um, you see, this is that existing tree. So the proposed planting in the yard, um, are the heights of any of the proposed plantings of an elevation that would cause a reduction in the visibility? Oh, that's a good question. Um, these are these are smaller ornamental trees. Um, uh, you know, if, if I don't know, I don't know my plants as well. Um, I wasn't prepared for that. Um, that that are are kind of dotted around the perimeter here. They've been pulled in from the corner, as you can tell here. We didn't want to to we didn't we were all we were trying to keep back from the corner um, mm -hmm. to keep lines of sight across the intersection there. Um, yeah. This you know this is a this is a proposed plan. Um, you know, is that something we can certainly take into consideration um, with the client and um, see if there's, you know, and address the, the questions that have come up today. Okay. Um, we what we do want to buffer, you know, these are, um, you know, there's outdoor living areas around the property. We want to allow the, the homeowners to really be able to use the, the larger property that they have and use their open space. So, um, but we just, we want to give them a little privacy corner lots tend to not have as much privacy. So that's why we're thinking about how is this is um, landscaped, you know, pretty early to, to ma maintain that through the project. Thank you. Um, uh, Dr. Vandenberg, did you have any other further questions? Thank you for asking. Um, I just, if if you are serious about the um, visibility and the landscaping, I would recommend you spend like maybe 25 minutes at that intersection because it'll- During rush hour. Yeah, during rush hour. It will really inform your understanding of how quickly cars go down and um, the level of uncertainty about where they're to stop uh, it, it, I think it could really help your plans for the landscaping. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Moore, did you have further questions or comments? Yes, Mr. Chairman, one last point. Thank you. Mr. Moore. Since we are reducing, uh, excuse me, increasing the footprint of the home uh, the, two, the homes on the property and reducing um, the, the open space, um, although it is rather uh, completely landscaped, I would suggest for the second driveway that permeable pavement get used to allow uh, water inflow to the, the land below. Since we, as I said, are, are uh, increasing the footprint of the house and decreasing the open space. Thank you, Mr. Kim. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Mills. Um, if I remember correctly, isn't Marathon Street a one way and there is a stop sign at this corner approaching that uh, new driveway? So you'd be coming down, the driveway would be on your right and the stop sign would be at the corner of the house? No stop sign. There, it's only on Waldo Road. There's a stop sign. If you're driving on Waldo Road, if you're coming down Marathon, there's no stop sign. Okay. Sorry. Oh, I lost my question. Is there a stop sign? You want to put one in? We would appreciate it. <laughs> there's, there's, one. there's one on this corner currently. <clears throat> this is the property. There's one on the Waldo side, Waldo Road. Mm -hmm. But it is, and it appears from the stop line on the street that there's a, there's one in both directions. Correct. Okay. It does look like whoever did the, replaced the main in the street did not re-stripe. Um, you know, I, I was talked, I think I was speaking to somebody at engineering getting curb cut information and there may be road improvements planned for the street mm -hmm. um, in the very near future. I'm not sure what those include.
Um, so thank you, Mr. Moore. Thank you, Mr. Mills. Uh, are there any other members of the public who wish to speak to this matter? Being none, I will go ahead and close public comment on this item. Um, so the board um, needs to reach a decision in regards to the, the question of um, allowing a second driveway. Um, we're, the house can be built, can be demolished and built um, by right. So we're, our decision is really limited to that aspect of the decision. Um, I did want to quickly um, The, so the in the zoning bylaw in that same section I quoted earlier, six one ten a notes that not more than one driveway shall be permitted unless there's a finding by the special permit granting authority for the development that a second driveway or driveway that makes more than one intersection with the street may be added in a manner that avoids an undue concentration of population, allows adequate provision of transportation and conserves the value of land and buildings in the vicinity. Um, and in no case may a second driveway uh, violate any other dimensional or density regulation for the district in which it is located. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. Um, <clears throat> it's it, just to have start talking about this subject. The, I think that the in this particular case, the uh, uh, I'm trying to find the right the right part of section A here. Uh, here, let me cut. Okay, there it is in the second. Um, but it seems to me that we're we're in a situation where where the safety issues we've talked about, and I think that it would be useful to have conditions making clear the need to adjust the uh, uh, plantings in such a way uh, and to choose species and, and locations and the design of the plantings in such a way as to, uh, to the satisfaction of ISD, uh, uh, avoid any, any pedestrian, uh, um, any, any pedestrian uh, uh, or, or driving uh, safety issues. Uh, beyond that, I don't think that, that in a two, uh, a, a uh, basically a, a, two, a duplex that continues to be a two-family structure, you're going to have an a undesirable concentration of population. And under the circumstances, particularly as Mr. Inessi points out, where you're really putting one, you're not putting two driveways next to each other, you're putting them on, op, on at, at right angles, so to speak, on two different streets. Uh, that uh, it's unlikely to be, uh, 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 it's, it's unlikely to do anything that would undermine the value of houses in the neighborhood. So it seems to me that, that uh, the requirements of uh, paragraph A uh, are met. Now, in addition, we also, we also have to consider the standard, by, standard special exception circumstances but these are the these are the special regulations due to that, and this seems to be a relatively uh, a relatively clear case with respect to that. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Are there further comments Mr. or questions from the board? Mr. Mr. Chairman, can Mr. You Dupont. Yeah, so um, I was sort of just picking up on what Mr. Hanlon said, but I was also thinking back to earlier in our meeting when um, Mr. Valarelli commented that if people want to put fences between two properties and run them out to the street, the first five feet has to be 30 inches or lower. And, and I think that that's sort of the idea that I had in mind when I was thinking of if you're gonna have a vegetated buffer. I don't know if the section that Mr. Valarelli quoted 8.07, I think that's in the general bylaws um, I don't know if that specifically states how high uh, plantings may be, but I would suggest that something along those lines be incorporated into the decision making for what a buffer would look like uh, between the two properties on the Marathon driveway. 
if it's approved. I, I can answer that, Mr. Chairman, if you like. Please. So there's two sections, a uh, uh, great point, Mr. DuPont. I think what we're talking about now is not only the uh, side yard, more importantly, section 5.3.12 traffic visibility, which clearly addresses for every good reason that one could imagine uh, the safety of um, uh, Connor lots, especially. So it's, it's uh, I won't bore you with the details, but it's clearly spelled out there. Nothing can be higher than 30 inches. And there's a formula to figure out what your safe area is and what your area of concern is. Uh, not only that, but I believe there's a diagram that spells it out as well. Anyway, that's part of our uh, plan review. Uh, th that would that would never get missed. Thank you. I was considering um, should the board wish to approve this, there would be um, what conditions would be appropriate. Um, there would be the three standard that we had enumerated for the prior hearing, uh, which I'll wave reading at the moment. Um, I was a little concerned about the, the, the lack of a curb in this area. Um, and particularly the sort of defining the end, the edges of the driveway. Um, and so I would like to propose um, a condition that the applicant is to provide a two foot radius cornerstone at both sides of each driveway. And basically, you know, not that the, the applicant is required to actually install a, um, you know, a complete curb around the street, but just that the ends of the driveway are clearly delineated. Uh, so that it doesn't slowly sort of migrate sideways. Um, and then uh, second was per prior comments, um, the ZBA notes that the applicant is to provide a vegetated buffer between the proposed side yard driveway and the adjacent property. Um, and then uh, third would be the ZBA notes that the applicant is to preserve visibility across the corner in keeping with the requirements of the zoning bylaw. And then as we had with the prior, um, similar to what we had on the prior case, um, the ZBA notes that the existing street tree, um, I haven't written this down yet. That the, Existing tree is a protected tree under town by, under the town bylaws. Okay, uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Moore. Uh, one thing, it, it, the street tree is protected not under the town bylaw in particular in this case, it's the Massachusetts chapter 89 regulation, I believe. And I'm not, you'll have to check that. I, okay. Off the top of my head, I don't want to claim the wrong regulation, but I believe it is uh, the Massachusetts uh, regulation. So it's under Massachusetts law, not under town. I, be, I believe so, yes. Okay. So that'll be the ZBA notes that the existing street tree is a protected tree under Massachusetts law. Are there any further comments, questions, or recommendations from the board? Seeing and hearing none, do we have a proposed motion? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. I, excuse me, I move that the uh, application be approved uh, th that, and that in that connection, the uh, board finds specifically that the spe special general conditions of special permits have been met substantially for the reasons stated in the department, the planning department memorandum, and that the individual requirements uh, of 6.1.10a um, have often have have also been met. 
Um, and I would just add that um, to include the seven conditions. Yes, of course, I'm sorry. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, is that Mr. Mills? Okay, uh, vote of the board, Mr. DuPont? Aye. Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Mills? Aye. Mr. O'Rourke? Aye. The chair votes aye. Uh, so the application for second driveway 53 Marathon Street is approved as amended um, and in keeping with the special conditions of section 110A. Mr. Chairman? Mr. Hanlon? I just wanted to say that I would like to echo uh, Mr. Moore's uh, compliment that th that the landscaping has been thought through at, at an early stage in the process. Um, and I just hope that anybody who stays up late watching old ZBA, uh, uh, old ZBA meetings notices this and, uh, and, and takes heart in the future. I think that's a great practice uh, to do. It makes our job easier. It makes Mr. Moore's job uh, easier. And I think it makes everything go faster and better for the applicant. Thank you. That's very well taken. Thank you. Thank you all. Back to our. Thank you very much. Very welcome. Thank you all. Uh, this brings us up to item number seven on our agenda this evening, which is docket number 3664, uh, which is 14 Nikod Street. Um, uh, Sean Hayes is here on behalf of the applicant. Hi, good evening. Sean Hayes is here. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for your time this evening. Um, by way of introductions, my name is Sean Hayes. Uh, I'm a lifelong resident of Arlington, Mass. Uh, I'm a 1996 graduate of Arlington High School. Um, I've owned 14 Nycod Street since 2009. I currently, re currently reside there with my wife and my two boys, uh, 10 and almost 13. My 10-year-old goes to Dallin School down the street and my almost 13-year-old is at Audison. Uh, we are currently turning our cape into a two and a half story structure. Um, obviously as a growing family, we need two growing boys. We need the room to uh, now fit them. Um, what we are applying for, and I'm sorry that I don't have a cool uh, presentation on the screen like the last two, but I believe that um, Valandry Construction has sent over a packet to the board. But what we are applying for is we're applying for a permit to put on a farmer's porch. And the main reason for um, our application is you know, twofold, we're, we're looking to bring some curb appeal to the property, but more importantly, we're looking for a structure and a place for my wife and I to sort of sit on the porch and watch our two young boys play in our front yard and on uh, our street, Nightcard Street, which is a quiet street, and our boys love to play basketball and football on the street. So that's really the main reason for our application. Um, happy to answer any questions. I know Fernando from Belandry Construction is also on the call, who is the, the technical expertise, but happy to answer any questions that I can and appreciate your time. Thank you very much. I will go ahead and share this. Thank you very much for that. You're very welcome. Uh, so this is the outline of the existing home. Uh, there's additional work that is not under our jurisdiction, which is um, this addition piece back here and what is um, up for review this evening is this front porch here. So these are the proposed elevations. Are there are questions and comments from the board. I do not see any. Um, back. 
the will uh, quickly refer to the memorandum from the uh, Department of Planning and Community Development. Um, and they had just noted that while the proposed porch sees the maximum square footage allowed by right, the overall proposal is not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood and is in fact a common feature um, in the surrounding neighborhood. Although none of the homes in the immediate area have the, a porch that's fanciful width. And the Department of Planning and Community Development maintains the proposals consistent with the zoning bylaw. With that, unless there's anything further from the board. Mr. Chairman. Mills. Uh, I would just like to say it looks aesthetically pleasing. I think it'll be a benefit to the neighborhood. Thank you. I will now open the meeting for public comment. Public questions and comments are taken as they relate to the matter at hand and should be directed to the board for the purposes of informing our decision. Members of the public who wish to speak should digitally raise their hand using the button on the participant tab in the Zoom application. Those calling in by phone, please dial star nine to indicate you would like to speak. You'll be called upon by the meeting host and asked to give your name and address and a given time for your questions and comments. Uh, Mr. Moore. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would, I would strongly echo Mr. Mills's comments. I think uh, this is an excellent addition. But my question, um, and I'm probably not asking this correctly, is I'm wondering if uh, Mr. Hayes or the Volandry folks uh, utilize the building uh, style guidelines. I don't even know if I'm naming them correctly. That has been referenced in ZBA meetings Previously, not recently, but uh, perhaps uh, a number of months ago, these new style guidelines. I believe the, the residential design guidelines. Thank you. Yes, sir. That's, I'm wondering if those were utilized here. Um, Can you hear me? Yes, please. Hi, this is Fernando, uh, owner of Valenti Contract. And yes, they have been. Mr. Chairman? Mr. Moore? I want to applaud Philandry Contracting for that because clearly the outcome here is uh, is excellent. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Um, Thank you. Uh, Mr. And Mrs. Jones. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, we live at the 7 Nicod Street, right across the street from uh, the Hazes. They've been Great neighbors. We have no objections. Thank you. Anything else? It would, it would definitely add curb appeal to the neighborhood. Mr. Carriera, do you want to speak as well? Go ahead and stop sharing. Are you asking me, I'm sir? Yes, you had your hand up, so I just wasn't sure. Oh, I, that was my accident. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. I'm trying to stay on the deck here because the kids are acting up inside the house here. So, <laughs> okay. Sorry that's, about that. That's another use of a covered porch. <laughs> yeah. say, you're not live at the subject property, are you? <laughs> no, no, I'm not. I'll uh, take my hand down. Hey, okay. are there any there further questions or comments from the public? Being none, I'll go ahead and close the public comment period for this hearing. Um, any discussion from the board? Being none, I, we have our standard three um, conditions, which have been read into the record earlier this evening. Um, I don't think there's a need for any additional conditions from my perspective. Does anybody else wish to add anything else? 
Seeing none, may I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I, I move that the uh, application be approved subject to the standard conditions that were previously read into the record. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. May I have a second on that? Second. Thank you, Mr. Mills. Uh, vote of the board, uh, Mr. DuPont. Aye. Mr. Hanlon? Pat, uh, aye. Mr. Mills? Aye. Mr. O'Rourke? Aye. Chair votes aye. Uh, so for the application for 14 <coughs> Street is approved uh, with the standard three conditions. Thank you, boys. Thank you all very much. Thank you very Thank you much. Very much. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Very welcome. Have a good night. Good night. Hi, everyone. Um, and then I will I'm just quickly wanted to bring up our upcoming calendar. Second. Okay, so this evening was the September 14th hearing. So the next scheduled hearing or the next scheduled date we have is Tuesday, September 28th, which is the submission of the revised draft decision for Thorndike Place. So I just uh, remind members of the board that if you have, um, you know, based on the, the, the current draft decision on Thorndike Place, which obviously is older, but um, if you have recommendations based on uh, that decision or any other recommendations in regards to what should be included in that draft decision, if you could please submit that to, uh, to Paul Haverty um, as soon as you're able. Uh, then the next meeting of the board will be Tuesday, October 5th at 6.30 p.m. Uh, just the continuation of Thorndike Place where we'll be focusing on that draft decision. Um, because currently Friday, October 8th is the close of the public hearing period for Thorndike Place. Um, let's get that in. Uh, I had asked earlier in the week about uh, the, the next hearing, which is set for Tuesday, October 12th. Uh, we have five hearings on the docket for that evening. I had asked if uh, we would like to start earlier um, rather than our normal 7.30, if we wanted to start at 6.30 for that one. Um, I had. One, uh, one member had asked if we could keep it at 7.30 and if had others at, say it would be fine to move it to 6.30. Um, is there any particular sense of the board as to which they would prefer? Mr. Chairman? If, if, I'm the, if I'm the one that is being read as opposed to it, uh, I'm, I'm perfectly amenable to whatever is most convenient for the board. Okay. Does 6.30 work for everyone else? Okay. You nod yes. and thumbs up. Yeah. Um, Mr. Valarelli, are we okay with starting at 6.30 or has this already been advertised as 7.30? No, uh, Mr. Chairman, we're okay. We have plenty of time. Okay. Uh, and I apologize for so many. Quite honestly, I, I only have a certain number of days to get these things heard once the application is 100% complete. So my hands were tied, so I had to load us up. That's all right. So we'll, we will start at 6.30 p.m. then on the 12th. Very good. Make that easier. And then uh, two weeks thereafter, October 26th, uh, 7.30, we have two hearings on the calendar for that. So that said, um, if on Tuesday, October 5th, we close the hearing on Thorndike Place, we'll then start the 40-day clock for deliberating and um, issuing a decision. So we need to uh, be cognizant of that because that will unfortunately need to overlap uh, with the hearings in October. So we may end up meeting um, sort of once, you know, one week we would meet to discuss uh, 
the regular hearings that are on this, but then in that intervening week and the week after, we may need to um, meet to discuss that decision. So just to keep that on everyone's radar, but that's obviously contingent on um, what happens on October 5th and whether we're still in open session or whether we're, we're closing the public hearing. So Mr. Chairman? Yes, please. The the 40 days will expire somewhere around November 14th. Is that, I'm, I'm just doing the rough arithmetic, but that's when we, unless there's a further extension, that's when we have to come up with a final decision. That sounds right. That's a Sunday. So presumably we won't do it that day. Um, okay. Yeah, so we could, I, th I think it would behoove us at the, at the time that we are ready to close the public hearing that we discuss with the applicant, what would be um, an acceptable date for delivering that decision. I will point out, Mr. Chairman, that November 11th is Armistice Day. Very true. Okay. Are there any questions about our upcoming schedule? Seeing none. Mr. Chairman? Yes, please. I would like to compliment Mr. Hanlon on his, uh, his understanding of history. Everyone calls it Veterans Day. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember lots of 11s. <laughs> <laughs> okay well thank you all for your participation in tonight's meeting of the arlington zoning board of appeals i appreciate everyone's patience throughout the meeting especially wish to thank uh, mr valerelli and mr lee and Ms. lenema for all their assistance in preparing for and hosting this online meeting please note the purpose of the board's recording of the meeting is to ensure the creation of an accurate record of the proceedings and it's our understanding the recording made by acmi will be available on demand at acmi.tv within the coming days if anyone has comments or recommendations please bba at town.arlington.ma.us then i would look for a motion to adjourn so moved Thank you, Mr. second Thank you, Mr. Mills. Uh, vote of the board, Mr. DuPont. Aye. Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Mr. Mills. Aye. Mr. Work. Aye. All right. Chair votes aye. We are adjourned. Thank you all very much for all okay. your assistance and uh, attention, patience, and everything else. Yeah. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night, good night, good night guys. Bye. Bye. Good night,